Shopify reported Q2 earnings this morning that showed that losses are accelerating and growth is declining, yet the stock is up over 5% today. Is this finally a sign that speculative growth stocks that got way overvalued during the pandemic have finally started to find a bottom? We'll discuss that and more on today's show. What is going on, investors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. Time to talk about Shopify, which over the last year, this stock is down massive. Like we're talking about over 75% and year to date, basically the same, down 75%. And yet we still have a forward price to earnings on this one, over 300. Can you believe that? And then when you look at a price to sales, you're still trading in excess to peers that are are far less overhyped. And so we'll discuss, is Shopify's cost-cutting efforts that they are going down, is this enough? And then certainly from a technical perspective, has this stock given back enough to make this level right now where we're at Shopify, the bottom in this stock. Talk about in the context of these Q2 earnings, which came out before the bell, revenue coming in at $1.3 billion. That was just, and I say just, 17% year over year growth. And not only that, it missed expectations by about 30 million. I say just because again, you have a massive price to earnings ratio on this one. And then compared to competitors, you've got massive multiples ap across the board when it comes to this company. Now, they are doing some share shareholder friendly stuff, whether or not it's friendly to reaccelerate this growth rate on this revenue side, that remains to be seen, but they're doing some shareholder friendly stuff. And I think that's what the market is reacting to. They're expecting operating expenses over at Shopify to decline meaningfully year over year in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter. So we should see some improvements from a profitability perspective over at Shopify as many of the employees and the executives that received a stock options at a much higher price will not see those vests as the stock continues to go down. Now, in terms of that growth rate over at Shopify, I think that's really important. We saw in the most recent quarter, analysts were expecting closer to 18, closer to 19% growth on that revenue, closer to $1.33 billion. In fact, some estimates had them as high as $1.4 billion. Again, we came in closer to $1.3 billion on that revenue growth, just 17% growth rate. Now, analysts are expecting, though, this company to accelerate into a mid-20s to 30% growth in the foreseeable future on that revenue side. That seems incredibly ambitious, especially when you are doing cost-cutting and you're eliminating staff over at Shopify. The other thing that we know about Shopify's customer, in fact, we see evidence of that when you see this growth rate stalled out, is you had a massive pull forward in demand for Shopify's business business services as people during the pandemic, business owners, small business owners in particular, they saw that their physical brick and mortar stores were physically shut down and they shifted to online. You also had a lot of new people come into e-commerce, start stores as maybe a side hustle. And those people are realizing how difficult it is to market and get sales. Not only that, those people probably experimented selling on eBay and Etsy and Amazon and some of those platforms are probably better fit for a lot of entrepreneurs. And so what we're seeing over the last year is a lot of those entrepreneurs that started up, the average success rate of a small business, especially when we're talking about e-commerce, is incredibly small. I mean, we're probably looking at one, two, three percent end up succeeding. And so the vast majority of people and businesses that sign up for Shopify will likely end up canceling and failing at business. That's just what the stats have to stay. So if you believe that this company is going to reaccelerate into a mid to high 30s growth rate I'm seeing at some point over the next two years. I think that's going to be an incredible challenge for Shopify, but they are taking some steps to right side these financials, which we'll look at here in a second. Shopify down 12%. This was the stock earlier this week on a report that they would lay off about 10% of its workforce or about 1,000 employees. Now they confirmed that when they released their 
their Q2 earnings press release today, they confirmed that this is actually a fact. This will likely improve financials and probably streamline things a little bit over at Shopify as they probably scaled up their back office and their employees a little too fast, thinking that the growth rates were simply going to be baked in over at Shopify. I personally would actually have more confidence in Shopify meeting these growth rate targets, whereas instead of saying that they were going to lay off 12% of their workforce, they were actually going to increase it. I actually would have more confidence that the company would do that. The fact that they're laying off their workforce is showing me that they're seeing a softening of demand as well. Now, they have other less hyped competitors when it comes to public e-commerce platform type stocks. Now, big commerce is a little bit different. It serves a different type of market, but all things be considered, it's somewhat similar and it's a far less hyped up stock. And we see from a price to sales basis, Shopify is still trading at eight times sales. And we talked about how th over 300 times earnings, although those earnings might get better with the cost cuttings, we'll see evidence of that potentially on the financials, but the company still trades at two times a price to sales ratio over big commerce, which also has saw a lot of demand wane from their stock as well. And when we look at big commerce, some of you might be saying, well, maybe big commerce's growth rate is not going to be as good. No, it actually is anticipated from analysts. There's far less analysts covering big commerce at opposed to Shopify, but analysts are projecting kind of like 20 to 30% growth rate on a revenue side over at big commerce. So these companies are expected by Wall Street to grow their revenues at a similar percentage, except you're paying a massive premium for Shopify. And I think when we go through these financials, you'll see that's probably a mistake. You see over the last year, you see evidence again of a lot of businesses likely cutting their Shopify subscription and less businesses coming in behind them to replace them. You had just $1.1 billion worth of revenue last year on a quarterly basis through three months. In the second quarter, you had just $1.3 billion. This is minuscule revenue growth, especially when you factor in this company does not make a profit from an operating perspective. Now for the six months, similar type of story, pretty mediocre revenue growth year over year on that six month basis from two point one to 2.5. What is going to reaccelerate people's demand for opening a Shopify store. We saw so much demand created during 2020 and 2021. I'm just not sure in the environment that we're at, small businesses are going to rush in mass to Shopify services. Maybe they'll prove me wrong. Now, this company does have pretty healthy gross margins, and that's probably why we continue to cover this company because of $1.3 billion worth of revenue. They had about 650, excuse me, $640 million worth of costs that led to that 655, nearly $656 million worth of gross profit. Now we're talking about gross profit because we haven't talked about operating expenses. Here's the most worrisome thing over at Shopify. Look at what happened to sales and marketing over the last year. You went from $201 million all the way up to $326 million. That's a more than 50% increase in sales and marketing. So they increased their sales and marketing spend by 50% and they got just 17% return on that top line. Now I know what the bull case argument is going to say. It's going to say, Hey, look, Shopify consumers could be a customer for years on a rebuild. Think like a Netflix subscription or Amazon prime subscription. Those customers are going to continue to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild. But the difference between this and a Netflix or an Amazon prime is 90%, probably closer to 95, 96, even maybe in a number close to 99% of the businesses that set up a Shopify store will fail. Those are the stats for any business out there, especially small business and e-commerce shops. So yes, they will get some recurring revenue off of the sales and marketing. And it could be that you have customers that pay yearly or multiple years in advance over at Shopify, and they're only able to recognize certain portions of that revenue over the quarter. I get it, but you still increase your sales and marketing spend by over 50% 
year over year, and you got just 17% back on that top line. How is that going to translate into future quarters remains to be seen. Research development also up, not really that big of a problem with that. General and administrative went from 77 all the way up to 130. That seems like an egregious jump year over year. And then finally, they have transaction and loan losses. Hello, look at that. That really accelerated as well. This company does have some credit risk and we're seeing this massively go up. Obviously, if we head into some kind of deep recession or anything like that, that could be a problem as well from that perspective. Total operating expenses coming in at $845 million. Folks, last year it was just at 481. So we nearly doubled our operating expenses. So here's the full story. You take this $1.3 billion worth of revenue, you minus off about $640 million worth of cost associated with that. Then you have operating expenses coming in at $845 million. And yeah, it adds up to $190 million loss over at Shopify. Last year, we thought they were turning the corner when they had a net gain from an operating perspective at about $140 million. You see for the full year on the six month basis, painting a similar story. We've swung from a $258 million operating income to a loss of $288 million. This company also lost some money on some investments that they've made. These are kind of market to market or on paper losses. They had to recognize that. So when you flow down to net income, it's a bad number, but we tend to focus, I'll tend to focus on operating results over at Shopify and they quite frankly got meaningfully worse over the last year. Now it does get a little bit better when we come down here to balance sheet. As you can imagine, this company did a nice job. I'll give credit to Shopify's management. They were raising money as retail investors were just going crazy on this stock. The insiders and certainly the executives were continuing to raise money and sell their shares at the top. They did a nice job shoring up this balance sheet on the backs of retail traders and retail investors that have pretty much lost their shirt on this one. You got well over six, nearly $7 billion worth of cash. You have almost no liability. So this company is well positioned to absorb these losses that we talked about from a net loss perspective, from an operating perspective. They are very, very, very well capitalized to absorb those. So there's no risk there in my opinion. Now you come down here to cash flows and you pull down a disastrous net income of a negative $2.7 billion. Last year we were positive $2.1 billion and this company was wildly overvalued then that has swung almost in the complete opposite direction in fact it has now in terms of cash flows we do get to add back in over 2.6 billion dollars so in this net loss 2.6 billion dollars is a net loss on some equity and other investments you see last year they actually had a gain i think that was due to they had an investment in a firm and a firm went public or they realized some of the gains on that investment this year those investments didn't go so well as a lot of speculative investments have crashed. And so it's kind of a double whammy with Shopify. A lot of their speculative investments have also crashed over the last year. Again, they're still well capitalized from a balance sheet perspective. I'd like to see this company continue to invest. Here's though the really troublesome thing. So net loss has really accelerated. They made some really bad speculative bets. It's canceled out a little bit. They made some better investments in the past. This company's revenues barely grew and our operating losses accelerated year over year. But guess what executives did? They compensated themselves very well to the tune over the last six months of $257 million worth of stock-based compensation. When your stock's up 75%, it's easy, very easy, in fact, to absorb stock-based compensation like this when it's down 75% like this. Well, this is more and more stock, okay? This is also contributing to the downward pressure on these shares. I think what the company is noting is that the fact that this $257 million worth of stock-based compensation, some of this had to vest early on in the company. And I'm sure as this stock completely fell off the map, they probably had to start renegotiating with certain key employees and maybe vest them a little quicker in the new value in the company. And so we saw an acceleration year over year. Last year, you had just $151 million in six months. That accelerated by over $100 million. And we talked about how this company grew their revenues by barely $100 million. And so you're growing your stock-based compensation in lockstep with that. Again, the company telegraphed that that might cool off a little bit. When you flow through all these ad backs and these additions, including the 257 and the disastrous speculative bets that they've made over the last six months, well, you still get 
get to negative cash flow in the quarter to the tune of $177 million. Last year, you were positive 202. So that's why I led the show that this is a really bad report, but this stock is bouncing. And I think this is somewhat, at least in the very shorter term, a bullish sign for the market. When your cash flows turn negative, your operating profits turn negative, and your growth rate shrivels, yet the stock is up 6%. What that is telling me is, yeah, a 75% decline in this stock is pricing in a lot of this bad news and investors are digesting this. Everything else, they didn't do a whole lot over at Shopify because quite frankly, they don't have the financial flexibility to do that. You notice last year, I talked about how they raised money by proceeds from public equity offerings. This is Shopify issuing shares and selling them into the open market and then putting that cash on the balance sheet. You notice last year, they did that to the tune of $1.5 billion. When your stock is down 75% over the last year, you can no longer do that. So in some ways, while that was dilutive and contributed to the massive declines in this stock, it did shore up the balance sheet. So if you are not in this stock at all, like myself, well, there could be some opportunities. Now, from a technical perspective, this has pulled back into a sideways consolidation area. I remember pre-split, I was pointing out this area. I was pointing out this area when this stock was much, much higher and people thought I was crazy. But as this stock lost momentum, it pulled very much like clockwork back into this sideways area of consolidation down here between about $30 per share and about $40 per share. Now we are in the shorter term bouncing off the bottom of this sideways consolidation. And you really see a lot of stocks starting to look like this. And this is encouraging to me from the broader market is over the last 90 days or so stocks have actually started to go sideways. And I tell you what, if you're out there and you're like me and you're trying to build your wealth for the long term, cross your fingers and pray to the heavens that stocks do this for a long period of time. Give up the stupid notion that a lot, I see this, especially with like Tesla investors. All they care about is when the stock goes up and goes up. No, what you want is the stock to predictably go sideways for a period of time. So you can constantly come in here and buy this stock when it bottoms down to the bottom of a range. And you can do that over a long period of time. Right now with Shopify and a number of different stocks that we're looking at, I wouldn't recommend this with Shopify, but you can buy these stocks as they go sideways here and buy the bottom of the range. With Shopify, it's down here at 30. It's just up 10% more than that. Quite frankly, with the momentum in this stock and if the momentum in the market remains, I would expect Shopify in the coming days and weeks ahead to get back up here to $40 only to meet the resistance that it's seen over the last 90 days. Sellers emerge and this stock continues to go back. Now, longer term, more specific to Shopify, I still think this valuation is incredibly rich. I personally, and this may not be you, but me personally, I'm not convinced we really accelerate to 30% growth rate on that revenue side. They're going to have to raise prices over at Shopify. And I don't necessarily think a company like this has that type of pricing power in this market. Also raising prices will tamp down demand, which already seems a little bit light. Quite frankly, I think you've got another 50% to go on this one, probably coming down to like a mid teen stock. You get down to mid teens, it would would put you in a price to sales basis in par with again less hyped up competitors like big commerce and it would give this company a little bit of room to catch up to its price to earnings ratio start producing profits and then maybe those investments in the other gross drivers like fulfillment and maybe a marketplace like platform could benefit shopify in the future but i tell you what folks this stock being down 75 percent putting up an absolute stink pre-market in terms of its earnings and still going up and also making this sideways consolidation. This is the recipe, what we're looking for in the markets. I'm not saying this a bottom, but if you have stocks that you like that are starting to make this sideways consolidation, I am personally doing this as well. I'm starting to buy the bottoms of the consolidation. I did it this week in Amazon and Google and several other stocks that I own. I think a lot of stocks will set up like this in the coming weeks and months ahead. Hopefully guys enjoy. Enjoy today's video. I'll be back in soon with more. Good luck with your investments.